قال الله الحكيم إن حكم الكتاب التي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إلا الإنسان الرحيم إلا الإنسان الذي خلق صلى الله عليه وسلم وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Believe it or not, this verse is true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually spoken the truth in this verse. Now you think of what it means. Of course, it's true. Quran. Easy for me to say, but I don't really believe so. I don't really believe in the depths of my heart that this verse is true. Do I really believe? The I, as a human being, in the inside, I'm in loss. So Allah isn't talking about a particular time. He's saying man is lost. <coughs> man being man is in loss. Today we are men and women. We are in loss. Problem. So how come I don't feel it? Then? How come I don't feel I'm in loss? I think everything is hunky dory, everything's okay, my life's going well. I have a job, I have, you know, I have family. I've come to these majalis. I know how to speak, I know how to give lectures. You know, I know how to say the ah and my makhaz is subhanAllah. Allah. Beautiful makhaz, beautiful voice, everything beautiful. So many friends, you know. It's different from now, so, you know, I'm sure that people, you know, they, they see me, they think, I'm just a man, you know. <laughs> so. But Allah tells us otherwise. So, in the insan, I'm going to be close. Strange, really strange. So, what does this mean? How come we don't see it? The answer comes when you look at the next part of the verse. Except some type of people. In fact, they're not the type of people. They only come out of loss when they do something. What do they have to do? They have to believe. It doesn't say, إِلَّا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ or إِلَّا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It doesn't say except the believers. It says, don't accept those who enact the belief and do good deeds. So it's not a particular group or category of people who are outside the scope of love. So basically, if today me and you are not doing any one of these two things together, then we are in love. Picture this. Let's see exactly if we are in loss or not, okay? Quran says that وَمَنْ يَأْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ يُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِيمٌ It's when the human being keeps away from the remembrance of Al-Rahman we appoint to him a shaitan, then that shaitan becomes his companion. So we ask ourselves one thing. In the day, in the day we know where we live, in a normal day, or even on a good day, how many times do I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Five, when I go to pray. Ten, maybe additionally. Actually, you know what? Five is a bit too much. Because normally, or maybe most of the time when we go to pray Salah, we don't really remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We might recite His word, but we don't really remember Him. Salah was made for what? Salah was instituted, established for what? It was to remember Allah. 
and to keep man away from sin. So now, <coughs> do we really remember Allah in the prayer? In the Salah, do we really remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we feel something, that something different is happening inside us? Something is taking over us. Do we feel that in Salah? Or in the end of the Salah, we come out exactly the same mood, you know? The only thing we feel is that, Alhamdulillah, man, this is finished. Done. I'm over, dusted, you know? This is how we feel. Or let's say, let's say for instance, we face a day where we encounter five different problems. Five problems in a day. Normally you don't have five problems, maybe you have one or two big problems. You remember Allah. Conclusion, what is it? Conclusion is this. Is that let's say we will establish our prayer. And remember Allah in those prayers, maybe for a few minutes, five times. We pray normally three times. So let's say, remember Allah for let's say three minutes, okay, for every salah, okay, so let's say 15 minutes. Then we have like, you know, two, three problems made in the day, so we ask Allah for help. Okay, so add another maybe five, ten minutes. What does it come to? 25 minutes. 25 minutes, and I'm not just giving you like a math lesson. I'm actually having to bore you and bore myself because if we don't statistically put down these figures then we're deceiving ourselves big time. Twenty-five minutes I spend if I'm lucky in the day remembering Allah. That means that twenty-three hours and thirty-five minutes in the day, Shaitan is taking over me. You, you don't agree, I and mean, is there some misconception? Is it not according to the laws of Quran? Or is that I don't want to believe this? Now you might think, okay, what's the point of saying this? There's no point of saying this is like horrific. But it might be horrific. But at least if we admit it today, then we've gone one step or not half the way into knowing ourselves. That knowing of the self is also included in the prophetic saying in the saying of Ali alayhi salam. He says, Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabba. Whoever knows himself has known his Lord. The least we can do is to know that those 23 hours and 35 minutes in the day we are controlled by shaitan. Why? Because we're left to our own selves. And we're left to our own selves, our selves only inclined to shaitan. That's its nature. That's the nature of the self, nafsul amara, which most of us begin with. So why is Allah given us such a nafs? He hasn't given us such nafs to always be disturbed by this nafs. After working with it, after knowing it, then we reach the stage of the food that we have the nafs al mutmainna or an eye on is like this. Beautiful companion, pleasant company. So isn't this how we want to emulate Imam Hussein Ali Salam? But we have to go through this major struggle, this jihad al akbar, and it's coping with this nafs. Coping with this nafs of Allah. Confessing to ourselves and complaining to Allah that Allah look, I know and now I'm believing and I'm trying I'm beginning to understand how those twenty three hours of my day are full of shaitani activity on the I'm not making it up. It's from Quran. Okay. If I leave at this Everything will probably, if we care enough, we go get crazy when we get home. So we don't need the place. But Allah wouldn't make a problem without putting a solution. So let's try and see what the solution is. 